figure out that for f, f prime and the integral of f, the radius is always the same. The interval of convergence is going to have the same numbers on each end, but the endpoints might differ as far as when they actually converge or whether they converge or not. Okay, so knowing this, you still have to use, why did I keep writing limit to comparison test, the ratio test? I, uh, I have no idea why I kept writing limit comparison. I did it all over this unit for some weird reason. I thought I caught them all, but I didn't. So, what? Okay, so anyway, um, so we're going to describe... We're going to describe the minimum steps you would need in order to find the radius and interval of convergence for all three. You okay, guys? Good. So, tell me the minimum steps you would need in order to find the radius and interval of convergence for f, f prime, and the integral of f. Yes, minimum steps. Just like a number? Any, anything. Are. No, okay. just tell me anything you have well, to do. You need to find the, um, you'd have to find the integral and the derivative. You would have to find f, f <coughs> prime and the integral of f. That is exactly right. I think I have that somewhere in here. Yes. You have to find f prime and the integral of f, right? What else? Any other things that you have to do in order to find the radius and inter interval of convergence for all three? Nothing else? Ratio test. You're going to have to apply the ratio test, right? And find the radius and open interval of convergence for f, right? And then what's the last thing you're going to have to do? Test the endpoints. Oh, look at you guys. Yes, tend to test the endpoints. So you have to, for the, a minimum, because your homework tonight is going to say, hey, find the radius and interval of convergence for f, f prime, and the integral of f, right? So you're going to have to find the three functions, well, the, the first one's given, and you're going to have to find, use the ratio test on the initial problem to find your radius and your open interval, and then you're going to have to test the endpoints on all three. Yes? Um, and does it work the same for f double prime, because that's in the homework too? Yes, because f double prime would be the derivative of f prime, and since if you think of f prime as your lead function, then it should still work. Yes, good question. Good. Other questions? All right, just to make sure you've got it. One more time. So take a minute. Find the radius and intervals of convergence for f, f prime, and the integral of f. Then we're going to do a little talk about it. Out of nowhere. So what's the rest of it? Oh, very happy. I don't know. You don't have the ECC. I have no idea. What? Comforting when you're on video for the world to have people oh. laughing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just, it's. Yeah, there's an issue there. I'm really laughing about, but I've got no idea what it's going to be. Okay. Steve, you have no idea what it's going to be. I really enjoy it. I'm doing it young. Sorry. Mine gets to work. <laughs>
differentiating with respect to x, right? Everything else just think of as a coefficient. Right? Everything else is just just gets multiplied by the
everyone got to hear? Did everyone get a radius of one and an open interval convergence of one to three? Yeah. Okay, and then what do you have to do next? You gotta find yeah, you gotta test your endpoints and make sure you find f, f prime and the integral of f, right? Find all three and then test your endpoints in all three. Times 
negative 1 to the n, right? So you end up with negative 1 to the 2n plus 1 over n. <coughs> this is not an alternating series. It looks like an alternating series, but it's not an <coughs> alternating series. Why is it not an alternating series? Yeah? It's always going to be odd. Because the exponent is always odd. So this is actually the same thing as just negative 1 over n. Right? It's deceiving. It's a deceiving non-alternating series. Good. Other questions? Interesting.